first impression that comes to our mind about any college tall buildings big classrooms large lobby areas thick books it labs assignments class tests and projects nothing besides that every hour minute second spent here help us carving and shaping our persona cultivating innovative mindsets for the challenging world learning is a lifelong process sharing knowledge inculcating values of life spark the innovative horizons of mind fun and frolic is the nature of every nook and corner here a daily dose of thrill we are sure to get here good morning everyone i dr manasvi associate professor of dme media school welcome you to the bg vaghis lecture series organized by media school delhi metropolitan education noida a premier college affiliated to guru gobind singh in the prasti university and approved by bar council of india bg vaghis lecture series are organized in the memory of mr bg vaghis a senior journalist and a winner of prestigious ramon magsesse award for outstanding contribution to journalism create much needed industry academia interface and provide students with the opportunities to interact with who's who of media these lectures also abreast the students with the latest trends and developments in the media industry now i invite professor amrit saxena dean dme media school and director international relations dme to give his opening remarks uh thank you manasi uh, so obviously this uh, bg vargis lecture series which uh, everybody knows that we organize uh, almost every month uh, maybe some sometimes some some disruption is there because of the Uh, so many other factors uh, but then uh, this is one series wherein we invite uh, very distinguished people from the industry from the academics to come uh, to to dme when it was in the physical mode and now it is in the virtual mode to uh, be online and to deliver a lecture on some topic of contemporary value and to get uh, involved in interaction with the students and uh, this whole discourse uh, happens and this we do on diverse kind of topics and this is the first time that uh, we have invited a foreign scholar to uh, be part of this uh, bg vargis lecture series and this obviously has become possible as uh, uh, one of the so many benefits of online media obviously there is a debate between online and the offline and which one is better but then obviously online has its own benefits and uh, because of this we have been able to 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 collaborate to uh, to to join so many foreign scholars be it i can be it sifi and now in bg vargis also and uh, talking about media literacy we all are aware that media literacy is one such area which is very very significant uh, given the current circumstances not only Only at the national level, not only at the level of India, but at the global level, and a lot of academic and the research work is happening as far as media literacy is concerned. And since the time this COVID nineteen struck last year in March twenty twenty, since that time that there was a whole uh, spate of this uh, fake news or the uh, or the or the, the planted stories and all kind of wrong information being. is spread and all and all this happened on whatsapp and other social media and the reason uh, behind major reason behind is uh, that there is no check uh, on such kind of information uh, nobody can verify though there are verification tools but then people hardly know about those verification tools so what is the need of the r to tell the people how to consume media how to use media how to uh, verify any information that is coming through media uh, and then and when i say media uh, i am referring to both the mainstream media as well as the uh, the social media so and to make the people aware to be more vigilant uh, on media literacy issues so media literacy has become so significant not only for the people who are studying media or who are practicing media but for all 
for everybody, for uh, every common citizen, it has become important. And it has turned out to be a big movement academically at various levels in many countries. We in DME also, uh, DME uh, collaborated with the, uh, with the Adamas University last year, and we organized uh, about 20-day media literacy course uh, for the school students here. So two schools, the Mayuri School and Delhi World Public School, uh, for their children, we, uh, along with Adamas University, conducted this, uh, uh, this media literacy program. So today, this media literacy is in the forefront as far as this uh, BG Varghi's lecture series is concerned. And we are fortunate that we have uh, Dr. Ali uh, Raza Bastani with us, uh, who is a prominent face uh, in the world as far as media literacy is concerned. He is so passionate about the subject that he are working, he is working day and night on this subject, uh, trying to, to, to pull a campaign all across from Asia to Europe to uh, South America. And he has uh, set up this uh, group um, in Iran for uh, this uh, media literacy. And he's trying to, you know, to, to keep uh, people from different countries at one platform so that this whole media literacy campaign can be taken forward. So I welcome uh, Professor uh, Bastani in this uh, session. And uh, I believe that this is going to be a fruitful session and uh, so we, we are actually uh, looking forward to listen to him uh, over to you manasri thank you sir for briefing us on the topic and about the guest it is my immense pleasure to introduce you all to our today's special guest of bg Bagi series dr ali reza bastani founder and executive manager association of iran media literacy ml tehran iran Today's BG Vaghi's lecture is indeed special as it is organized with the cooperation of Iranian cultural attaché, Mr. Rabani. My gratitude to Mr. Rabani as well. Dr. Ali Reza Bastani will be delivering a lecture on the topic media literacy, critical thinking and democratization. Dr. Ali started his career 35 years ago with a teacher's training college. He worked as a freelancer in preparing TV reports from the international conferences in Iran. He joined Ministry of Foreign Affairs and was assigned to a diplomatic mission to Zimbabwe. While working at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, he collaborated with the Section of International Affairs in a variety of different state offices, such as Meteorological Organization, Ministry of Guidance, Tehran International School, International Cultural Center, affiliated to Tehran Municipality. In recent years, he founded the Association of Iran Media Literacy, Evil, which is the first NGO in media literacy in Iran. He is a regular columnist for Sports News and Azadi Weekly. During the time, he was invited to Islamic Republic of Iran Broadcasting as a sport program presenter and later the political news anchorman and recently as an editorial board of Novaran newspaper. He has been also teaching at James Scientific, uh, James Scientific University for 15 years and has been a political commentator in Press TV. Interestingly, he has been practicing different martial arts in Taekwondo and Karate in a period of 40 years, and currently he is also a karate coach. Sir, we all are eager to hear from you. Over to you, Dr. Ali. Uh, thank you uh, so much, and thank you, uh, thank uh, a lot of thank to Dr. Saxena. Uh, first, uh, let me apologize all uh, students and everyone in this meeting for being late because it was my first time using uh, the Zoom application and uh, their. Uh, uh, I got some problem in joining you on time. Uh, by the way, uh, good morning to everyone. Uh, let's uh, start. As uh, Dr. Saxena uh, recalled that uh, media literacy is one of the most important things in the human societies. Yes, and that's why I'm trying uh, to start uh, by the definition of uh, first, uh, what is the meaning of uh, literacy and what are we supposed to get out of the any kind of literacy in the world. Uh, media literacy, uh, okay, shall I uh, do we it will, myself? We will, share, we will, share, we will share the my, presentation. My we'll, we'll do it. Shruti ma'am, can you please share the presentation? Yes. Okay, uh, uh, let's start uh, with the next uh, slide. Well, uh, <clears throat> yes, uh, this is the title of uh, today's speech, which is Media Literacy, Critical Thinking and Democratization. Uh, on the next slide, uh, slide uh, you uh, 
Yes, you see that uh, when we are talking about the critical media literacy, it means that uh, this type of literacy empowers the disempowered communities. Okay, uh, what is the meaning of literacy? When we are talking about the literacy, it means that uh, any type of literacy in the world comprises uh, and it, uh, they are giving some competences to uh, anyone, to the human being, which is involved in uh, effectively learning and using socially constructed form of communication and representations. Uh, the competences that we are supposed to get out of uh, any literacy should have this uh, qualification. They should be practical. It is very important because as long as we are not having uh, the outcome and any conclusion out of uh, literacy, which is not practical, then it is useless, okay? It is impossible to learn or to teach anyone in the world. The second one is it should be applicable in the social contexts. <clears throat> the context uh, governed by rules and conventions. Number four is uh, a socially based construction in educational and uh, cultural practices. It means that we have to try to bring out everything out of our learning into practice and into action. Number four, uh, number five, it should be resulted in social and cultural changes. You see that I have uh, made this word into the bold face, changes. We are supposed <clears throat> to use our learning, our education in communities to have some changes in any uh, different levels of our societies, communities, okay, in any, any part of our uh, lives. So we expect from our learning and education or literacy at all to uh, make some changes, okay, in response to the interests of elites who control the hegemonic institutions. What do we mean by media literacy? <clears throat> it means that uh, the media literacy is giving us this ability to identify different types of uh, media and understand, the, and it makes us, uh, enables us to understand the media content and messages. Uh, media literacy without critical mean, you, you know, they are all together, okay? We cannot make them apart, media literacy apart from critical thinking. They should be all together. Otherwise, the media literacy would be useless, okay? It, it, it won't be, uh, let's say, applicable in communities. So, uh, we are using the media literacy with the critical thinking, uh, joining uh, together uh, and uh, otherwise uh, they won't represent the feasibility. That's why we always say uh, the phrase of the critical media literacy or CML. Uh, okay, uh, all media show one thing in common. It is very important. Please uh, get back to the uh, previous slide, if you may. Yes, this is very important. That for media production, it means that someone created it. It was created for a reason, okay? That whenever we are teaching our students to analyze just a part of the movie, a part of the advertisement or whatever in media production, they have to know that this media production have been created for a reason. Understanding the reason is the basis of uh, media literacy, okay? It means that uh, we should teach them how to use movies, TV shows, advertisement, whatever, to teach them the media literacy. Uh, okay, uh, on the next slide, what are the purposes of media literacy education? 
Actually, the media literacy education helps the students learn and develop the skills uh, of inquiry. Okay, inquiring of who? It means that everyone in all societies in the world, they have to be able to get and to learn the skills of inquiring of most of the, of the time, the people who have got the power in their hands, the politicians, the decision makers in the societies. Uh, and any related events happening in, their, uh, in every part of their lives, either in their own countries or internationally. It means that we should not be anxious regarding to whatever happens in uh, our own country. No, we have to look, we have to be able to analyze uh, different events happening internationally. Okay, let me uh, draw your attention to this point that uh, within the most important recent event happened in the world is the event of uh, incident of Afghanistan. Okay, we say that the media literacy should be, uh, should uh, enable people, audiences, children and students to analyze whatever happens in the world. Are we taking the incident of Afghanistan important or we have to be impartial regarding to this event? These are the things that we have to get. We have to learn from the media literacy education. If we are not getting this qualification out of the media literacy education, it means that the media literacy education is useless. It is not working out. It is not feasible. Uh, let's go to uh, another, uh, another one. Yes. What does critical me thinking mean? Okay, critical thinking is entangled uh, with the uh, citizen participation. What does citizen participation mean? It means that everyone in all communities should uh, be responsible to their social responsibility. They have to uh, uh, actually respect to their uh, any uh, responsibilities that they are supposed to do. They are supposed to follow. So uh, people should not uh, be uh, impartial to the incidents. Uh, they, <clears throat> the media content and messages, uh, we should not leave unquestionable the media content and messages because they are not going to be impartial toward any economic, societal, environmental, and political issues and whatever happens in communities. To be critical thinking, okay, uh, let me tell you that what are the qualifications of, of critical thinking? It means that we should have our audiences uh, uh, as a, you know, political savvy, social analysts, environmental caretaker, and having the sense of altruism, acquiring radical democracy. Okay, I'm uh, later, I'm going to explain to you what is the difference between the, the democracy and the, the radical democracy uh, via empowering the societal institution. Okay, when we are talking about the radical democracy, it means that we have to make, we have to create uh, some uh, societal institution in order to get more democracy in our societies. Okay, by making and creating some institutions which is going to enhance, to add, uh, to the democracy that we are supposed to have in the uh, communities. And also the insight of peace and justice. The critical thinking requires some qualification which leads all students and audiences to the participatory citizenship. It means that learning to follow the social responsibilities and being action anxious to what happens to people. We should not be anxious only regarding to our own people in the country. We, when we are talking about the altruism, it means that we have to be anxious about the human being in the world. 
whatever happens to the uh, communities and societies across the world. This is the aim and target of the media literacy education. Please uh, uh, listen to this point that if media literacy education is not giving us this qualification, it is not uh, initiating this uh, trait in the audiences, so uh, it is not working out. Later, I'm going uh, to explain more about these things. The core standpoints and principles in uh, critical media literacy, uh, which must be taught, is number one, media messages are always articulated. It means that they are not transparent to everyone. Why? Because they are articulated. They are not going to show what uh, is in their mind. They are using different languages. They are using the aesthetics in their uh, media production, just in order not to show, not uh, to envisage what is in their uh, mind. So uh, the media messages are not transparent. Uh, because uh, the contents are constructed. And the, uh, okay, every, uh, you know, uh, every media owner, they pretend that whatever they are producing to the human, uh, to the, uh, let's say, communities, they are not prob uh, problematic and they are tr transparent. While it is uh, just, uh, you know, uh, uh, it is, uh, they are pretending that uh, it is not problematic. Actually, they are. Because it is the, con uh, the construction in the media production which determines what to include or what to exclude, uh, exclude in the representation of reality. Again, I am going to uh, assert this point that the media content or the media are not presenting the reality. They are representing of reality. Uh, number two, uh, media literacy proves that uh, media perform, uh, what media perform are not the presentation of realities. They uh, represent that, okay? What they do, what they function is the representation of the reality. Okay, so educators must teach the students the creative language and aesthetic of media messages. It is very important. They are using any type of media uh, languages just in order to make their own production so beautiful and not clear to everyone, not understandable. Uh, it is believed that media messages are constructed and non-transparent. Number four, media productions are polymorphous. So, okay, uh, again, uh, I am going to insist on this point that all the media production are using, are using the semiotics. Uh, it means that, uh, okay, uh, for example, whenever I am talking to some educators in my country, uh, media educators, uh, I only uh, prescribe uh, for uh, teaching uh, the students uh, with some movies. I uh, only uh, tell them that it is better to uh, use and to show and to ask your students to produce some movies, some footage, okay, in different, uh, let's say, in different aspects in their communities. So uh, then it is very important that the, most of the media production which are feasible and which are effective on uh, the audiences, they are using uh, the semiotics. Uh, you've got to uh, pay more attention to the semiotics all the time, uh, either in uh, film production or in uh, other media production. So when we are talking about the semiotics, it means that uh, we should know what is the denotation and connotation. What is the signified and signifier? I will give you some uh, ex more example regarding to this point. And the next one, uh, we have to teach the political views, the political uh, aspect, okay? And the political education to our students. 
uh, it is uh, Robert Ferguson, one of the American scholars in the world, who says that uh, all the time you have to educate your students and your audiences with the political science. I mean the basis, okay, the basis of the political education to your audiences, because it is impossible to uh, educate the media literacy or the critical media literacy without and apart from the political education. It is not, again, it, it won't be feasible. It is said that with the emergence of the new uh, media, the cultural plurality is getting decreased. But I don't believe in this statement. I believe that uh, by the emergence of the new media and the new technology in media education, it is proliferating uh, sub subcultures among the youths. You can see uh, it. Uh, by the social media that are producing many more subcultures. Number four, uh, seven, critical media literacy challenges the social construction of information and communi communication, which are actually based on the cultural, ethical, and values accepted by the majority of people in communities. Okay? Uh, Let's uh, go to another one. And the last one, as DOE uh, argued, critical media literacy education is necessary to enable people to participate in democracy for without the targeted, educated, informed, and literate citizenry, strong democracy is impossible. Okay, uh, as uh, I was talking about the semiotics, uh, because I've got a, a book in semiotics in, uh, in, in Persian language. Semiotic is crucial when we teach uh, critical media literacy using any media spectacles. From the perspective of semiotics, the act of uh, writing or speaking, uh, the act of uh, composing text in, uh, is an act of signification. Speech and writing and code system, because you know that in, uh, in the communication, okay, uh, there is a procedure of encoding and decoding. Me as the sender, uh, uh, you know, I am trying to encode my uh, thoughts uh, into words, okay, just in order to transfer to the receivers that you are, you students, as the receiver of my message. And then you are getting my message, you try to decode it. So all the time, the communication is exchanging encoding and decoding of the message. So within encoding and decoding, we are using semiotics in all levels of media production. Uh, let us go to... The next one, uh, I am, uh, yes, uh, let me uh, give you some uh, example regarding to see my, when we are talking about the car, a car is literally a denotation, okay? It means it is a means of transportation. Whatever, okay, uh, any car that you see in the street, they are the means of transportation. This is the denotation denotation of car. But if you are looking at a Lexus or a Mercedes-Benz or other pricey uh, model of cars, it is a car that also implies uh, that the person using this car is a wealthy man, has high social status. This is the point of connotation. And uh, I was uh, trying, okay, uh, for example, you see the image of a cat, not the picture, an, an image of a cat. This image is a signifier and refers, okay, it goes and refers to a, a very real cat. The real cat is signified. Okay, these are the things that we are using all the time in semiotics. Okay, the uh, next one, the you know, semiotics is mostly used uh, in uh, the media production of ideology. 
it is very important to you if you pay more attention to this point that whenever we are facing, we are dealing with the ideological uh, media messages or content, they are using most of the time uh, using some aesthetic and semiotics in their production. Uh, okay, the, another one. How does the critical media literacy function? Okay, uh, they should be uh, the project of radical democracy. They have to be able to develop the skills uh, that will enhance democratization and participation. Uh, it should be a comprehensive approach that would teach critical skills. Okay, critical skills mean, uh, means that no one should, uh, uh, should feel fear to express his or her own idea regarding to the uh, events happening in their societies. They should be able to analyze it well and uh, logically. Uh, on the next slide, uh, you see that uh, this is uh, another qualification of me critical media literacy that it causes and enhances the participatory citizenship and democracy. Participatory democracy, which causes politics transform into media spectacles. This is important. If we are looking for the democracy, it means that we have to be able to inquire the uh, polit politics to be transformed in the media spectacles. Number six, uh, politics transformation uh, could be used to help invigorate democratic de uh, debate and participation. Seven, turning media spectators into active consumers. Yes, it is one of the qualification out of the critical thinking. The critical thinking makes everyone to be active in the society, to be active the media cons uh, consumption. And the, the next one, uh, educating the inquiry skills, which depends the student's knowledge in critical uh, exploration and issues that affect them and society. Uh, okay, uh, the critical thinking requires a qualification, as I mentioned before, which leads all students and audiences to the participatory citizenship. That means leading to follow the social, please next, next slide, to follow their social responsibility and being anxious. Uh, am I audible? Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, to be anxious about what happens to people. It means that we look in the media, in critical media literacy to train the best egalitarian future leaders. Whatever we do in our society is to uh, train, okay? Uh, is, uh, I don't know whether I am visible or audible. You are audible, audible and you are, yes, sir. Yes, sir, you are. You are audible and visible both. Please continue. So uh, we have to uh, teach the critical media literacy just in order to make some leaders some best leaders, some humanitarian leaders in future, because we are training our students, our children at home, to be uh, the, uh, let's say, uh, egalitarian leaders in future in their societies, not in their own country, but internationally. Uh, okay, the next, please, the next slide. <clears throat> Again, the next. Uh, <clears throat> we should say that uh, media literacy education is not efficient. So it does not work out. Okay, this is a very concrete verdict. There must, there must be a comprehensive transformation in the media literacy education because it is not responsive at all. I think we have to go to three more slides ahead. <clears throat> Would you uh, please go ahead, yes. Okay, uh, how are we going to teach the critical media literacy 
or critical thinking to our students. Teaching critical media literacy should be a participatory collaborative project. It means that we are going, uh, no, you have, done, uh, you have done uh, some more slides ahead, but it doesn't matter. I will continue. <clears throat> it means that we have to uh, try to bring some movies in our, uh, you know, uh, in our classes. Okay, we have to show the students uh, to watch the uh, TV shows, TV programs, and most important thing, news programs. Because uh, we have re uh, reached to this point that the media production have been mostly focused on, uh, you know, uh, uh, changing and turning the entertainment into the news form. And uh, watching television shows, films, news programs, documentaries, and feature movies together could promote productive discussion between teachers and students, between parents and children, just in order to elicit students' view. Because all the time we are, uh, we are showing uh, some part of movies to our students just in order to give them the ability of analyzing the media production and um, the, the most one with the uh, movies or maybe the movie production. So they have to be able, we are trying to elicit the students' views and enable them to produce a variety of interpretation of media. All the time, oh, you know that, okay, let's go through these four components of media literacy. We say that there are four components in uh, media literacy. The first one is having access to the media. I mean the media devices, because whenever we are talking, uh, we are taking and showing our cell phone or laptop or whatever, it means that we, are, uh, we say that they are media. They are not media. They are uh, actually the media devices or media channels. Okay, the first one, uh, the first component in uh, media literacy is having access uh, to the media devices. Number two, having access to the media content and messages. Okay, it is possible for everyone. Number three, this is very important because the last two uh, steps and uh, they are so important for uh, accomplishing uh, the media literacy in our students. Number three is uh, being able to analyze the media content and messages. This is a very crucial step. And number four, which is very important, is being able to produce your own uh, media production, your own media message. We have to see in our societies that if, they are, if it is possible to have the next uh, two steps in the four uh, categorization of media literacy components or not. Uh, okay, then uh, I am talking to my audiences and students that you have to be able to produce your own media content. Uh, the MIL curriculum, Media Information Literacy Organization, which is affiliated to the UNESCO, it is not giving uh, to our audiences what, how they should produce their own media message or media production. This is very important. But I, all the time, uh, I ask my students to produce uh, uh, their, their, their inquiries, okay, by making some movies all the time, because movies, uh, movie production is one of the most important and uh, impressive uh, media production in the world. Uh, okay, uh, let's uh, go. Okay, the communication technologies and the democracy procedure. The, uh, the technologies of communication are becoming more and more accessible to young people, to our youths and ordinary citizens, and can be used to promote education, democratic self-expression, and uh, social uh, progress. Okay, democracy is most elusive concept. Okay, elusive concept. What? Do I mean? I mean that we get, uh, we get mystified by the term of democracy because democracy is a concept. It is not a word. It is not a meaning. It, is, it doesn't have any meaning at all. 
it is uh, evidenced that the discrepancy between its original meaning and its power uh, that we are dealing with today. Democracy actually never meant the rule of people, never. What do I mean? I mean that it was born as a pejorative word, warning against the crude power. Okay? Crude power, the brute power, or whatever. Because when we are talking about the power, it goes back to its origination, which uh, was referring to Kratos. Okay? And when we say demo or demos, it is actually the meaning of people. So democracy is demostratos. And uh, gradually this word changed into demo uh, democracy. Uh, there is no clear definition regarding to uh, democracy. It is assumed as a concept that democracy is a normative concept. Democracy is a normative concept. We live in a digital world. We see that, okay, all the time you, uh, we are dealing and we are uh, teaching with our students uh, in uh, our schools, in our uh, the colleges and universities. Okay, they are not patient enough to go and search uh, the meaning and the content of some concept like democracy in encyclopedia or in uh, you know, dictionaries, whatever. Okay, just they want to have the meaning of the words in a glance. So it is impossible. Okay, uh, we see that all the time uh, the politicians in the world they are using the democracy in every country across the world. But actually, uh, let me uh, acknowledge that I am sure that they don't know the real meaning of the democracy because the democracy does not have any clear meaning, it is a concept. How are we going to define the concept of the uh, democracy into one uh, sentence in one statement? It is impossible. Uh, so what uh, are we going to do? What are we supposed to do? It means that we must redefine all these complicated terminology. Uh, when I say all these com uh, complicated uh, uh, terminology, uh, I uh, refer to the word of peace, to the word of justice, reconciliation of nations, okay? All these terminologies are complicated. We have to redefine. We have to rehabilitate. Okay? Uh, we believe that the education in the uh, is in the close relationship of terminologies, okay? Whenever you are teaching your students, you are using some proper and suitable words just in order to deliver your concept in your mind to your students. So we are going to use the terms uh, that all the time, every minute we are using. <clears throat> so any terms like democracy, peace, justice, and so on, must be redefined as an easy word to understand, since they are not understandable in, 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 in a glance. <clears throat> okay, democracy, a combination of demos and kratos in Greek. Kratos, known as the god of war in ancient Greece, uh, who is the brother of Nike. Nike is the Greek goddess of victory. Maya, Greek goddess of force. And Zealous, Greek god of rivalry. The four of them, the four of them together, were the closest companion to Zeus which is the Greek mythology. And he is most familiar for his character of holding the brute power. And that's why we are using uh, Kratos. Kratos uh, it, uh, you know, uh, is the same as the brute or crude power. He's seen as companion of Zeus and guardian of his throne. In the year of... Uh, 507 uh, BC, the uh, At uh, Athenian leader uh, Kalatinas introduced a system of political reforms. And this is the reason that uh, the democracy does not mean the rule of people in their societies, okay? Because it was, uh, they, 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 he was using this word and he 
created this world actually against, against uh, this Kratos or the brute power in the society. A system of uh, political reforms that he called Democratia, the, uh, or rule by people, by the people. From Demos, which is people, and Kratos, which is power. It was the first known democracy in the world. He actually put the demos or people against the brute power of Kratos. What is the distinction between the term of democracy and the radical democracy? Democracy is a form of government, right? In which citizens have the power and authority to choose their governing legislation bodies. While the radical democracy uh, as it is as an ideology, was articulated by Ernest Wattler and uh, Chantal uh, Mufi, for which they argue that social movements attempt to create social and political change. I think it is on the next slide. <clears throat> And these movements are to be achieved through the societal institutions. Then uh, we uh, understood, we learned that uh, the radical democracy could be achieved by installing the societal institution in our uh, communities in order to receive much more uh, you know, uh, other kinds of, uh, you know, concept of democracy. <clears throat> Restate and rehabilitate the word democracy. Okay, democracy is nothing something we have achieved or therefore have forever. Democracy is a process. Democracy is a tendency in our everyday life. It is clear that whatever, whenever there is a crisis, this is very important, whenever there is a crisis, the concept of democracy appears and its fundamental presupposition comes in our mind. You see, then, uh, uh, whenever there is a crisis, okay, uh, there is some uh, uprising, there is some unrest in the communities or in the world, the world, or the concept of democracy appears in the society. Uh, we know what we don't want. The next slide, please. <clears throat> okay, the point is that by using democracy, by using democracy, uh, we know that we don't, what we don't want. We don't want the crisis in the society, whatever. Uh, though it is not clear to us what we want out of democracy. We don't require any type of Kratos characteristics which could uh, be against the people's will. Democracy is tightly entangled with the political culture, which is applicable all around the world and calls the tolerance of ethnic uh, religious and gender differences uh, while it is necessary to find out the basic foundation and foundation of democratic system. <clears throat> Looking to find out the answer to these questions. Okay. Uh, The first question is, who is going to initiate the democratic system in the world? We know that every day, every minute, we hear, we use, we utter the word of democracy by ourselves or uh, anyone. But whenever they are using this uh, concept, we have to ask them, okay, who is going to initiate the democratic system in the world? Or actually, is there any democratic system in, in the world? Can you find out? Uh, 
What do we expect from the concept of democracy or to get performed in local or global communities as well? How are we going to interpret a concept into a tangible and understandable term, which can create a new and clarified definition in children's mind? Okay? Otherwise, they are not understand, they are not going to understand this term because they are going to take the best advantages out of this democracy in their mind and to perform to this uh, the meaning of this concept in future. To what extent do we need democracy? The concept of media literacy education is entangled with these terms, with these definitions, which should be clearly expressed and applicable in the digital era. Okay, so what? What am I going to conclude out of uh, my talking? Uh, I would like to say that that is enough to make theories in the world of media literacy education. That is enough, okay? There are lots of theories in media literacy. Okay, how come are we using or turning this theory into action or into performance? It means that we need the strategy of praxis. The next slide, please. <clears throat> we need the praxis in our education, which may lead us from a move from the theories to the practice. This is the only remedy to the media literacy education to be feasible and understandable. Okay, media literacy education has never performed its prophecy, its mission towards the humanity. Again, I have brought this uh, example once more because all the time within these tour, recent tour, three months, I am using the incident happened to Afghanistan as a non-democratic performance of the superpowers who did win this country to the people. We saw that there is no democracy in the world. We saw that there is no human right. <clears throat> there is no, uh, we saw that there is no women's right, no children's right, whatever. Because <clears throat> we have seen the tragic incidents in Afghanistan for which the US government and the other European countries surrendered Afghanistan in the hands of Taliban terrorist assassins, killers. Democracy can be defined as, okay, this is my interpretation out of the democracy concept. The process which provokes a community to get informed by media and leads them to a reasonable and intelligent decision making in any issues of importance in favor of citizens and in participation with politics. Of course, it could be, you know, changed. Uh, this uh, the definition should be changed, actually. Okay, and we have to make clear all these concepts because when we say that there are some problem with something, it means that we have to uh, prescribe some, uh, let's say, some remedies or uh, some. Uh, just uh, some remedies just in order to resolve this problem out of our communities. The Association of uh, Iran Media Literacy or IML has held a global, uh, okay, this is, uh, I'm going to put an end uh, to my speech because uh, I am so sorry, Dr. Saxena, when you told me that uh, we are going to have up to, uh, at most up to yeah. nine o'clock, yeah. but, uh, <laughs> no okay, uh, I am going to finish it. Uh, just I would like to uh, inform everyone in this uh, session that the Association uh, of Iran Media Literacy has held a global campaign, uh, which is called the Media Pro, to write and propose a new uh, media literacy curriculum to the MIL uh, uh, affiliated to the UNESCO and uh, to the member countries. Uh, on uh, behalf of uh, IML, I am uh, inviting you to join us uh, in the Media Pro campaign. Uh, for more information, you can talk to Dr. Saxena or uh, you can get uh, some uh, information uh, out of this slide. Uh, I, I am so sorry if I was too long and my speech got uh, out of the time. 
uh, you know, uh, you uh, uh, informed me. Yeah, uh, Dr. Bastani, I believe that some of my colleagues and uh, students, they are also there to ask you something and to have some interaction. Uh, Dr. Manusi, <laughs> please take it over. Yes, um, I, we have, uh, thank you so much, sir. First of all, thank you so much for such an insightful session. And we have a lot of questions coming in. So now I ask Mohit sir to take over and, you know, take the audience question as, the, as well as the faculty question quickly, if you can do that. Mohit sir. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Manaswi, and thank you so much, Dr. Bastani, for explaining the core concept of media literacy in such an elaborative manner. My first question to you is uh, that uh, you were talking about that the students uh, whom we are targeting for media literacy, they have a very uh, limited uh, span of attention. So in that case, and then we know that uh, there are uh, multiple messages that are spreading on social media. How can we actually uh, instill that critical uh, thinking ability into them so that they can decide what is correct and what is incorrect in that manner? Because we have a lot of messages that are coming on social media <coughs> and we know that students, uh, they don't go into the core concept and they You're study right. these things. You're right. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, I have been talking to my students all the time that uh, we have to find some standards uh, for this concept, which are not so clear to people, like democracy, peace, justice, whatever. Uh, and uh, let me tell you the, the, this, this uh, explanation that Johan Galtung says about the peace in the world, okay? Uh, Johan Galtung, who is one of the theorists in the world, uh, uh, theorists in peace uh, negotiations or something, he says that peace appears when uh, violence uh, goes in the societies. Okay, he's as a prominent theorist in the world. He is not giving any standard that what is the actual meaning of uh, the concept of peace. He says that peace comes into mind when there is uh, a violence. So what is the standard? Or says that we are, we, uh, and uh, he says that there are three types of uh, violence. The individual violence, the organized violence, and the uh, community violence or something. Okay, uh, and says that, he says that uh, whenever we are talking uh, about violence, it means that we have to make some solution to, to the violence in the community by, by doing, uh, by resolving the violence by our good and uh, our good manners. You see, he is not giving, he is not submitting. Okay, you say something good. Okay, what is good? What is bad? There is no standard for, okay. But I think that for the human communities in the world, we have to focus uh, on training our children, even at home or at schools. And uh, we have to bring up them with the ethical points, okay? With moralities, okay? With uh, humanities. I think that the concept of humanity is the same in all countries, in, the, in, all, uh, in all cultures, right? It means that being in the service of each one, of the human being, mankind. Okay, it means that you have to respect to the to any type of human out of you know out of the concept of religion, out of the concept of uh, uh, race and ethnics or uh, et ethnicity or something, right? So uh, these are the concepts that they are so crucial. They are very very important, and it is on the educators who have to explain more by giving some tangible examples to the students, okay? Just by showing some action, by performing some, uh, some, some, some uh, let's say, uh, performing uh, some movements, some measurements, okay? And giving them that, okay, when we say something is good or something is bad, okay, what is good? We have to uh, clarify it by giving some example and uh, what are bad, okay? It is uh, all the, uh, and again, uh, I would like uh, once more to insist on this point that please, you educators, do whatever you want to do in your class by, by showing some movies, okay? Just piece of movies. You try you yourself as educator to make some movies 
or you bring, for example, when uh, I am going to uh, my classes, I am uh, taking uh, some part of the Godfather, okay, the feature movie of Godfather. And uh, I am showing them the, the, this type of uh, media language to my students that you have to be uh, so careful that you see that the uh, God power in this movie is a mafia group, okay? They are, uh, they are, they are actually, um, they, they've got some trust in um, drugs, okay? Narcotics. They are the traders, okay? They are... Uh, uh, they have got some prostitution centers in, 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 in their countries or whatever, okay? But they are more confident about the uh, relationship, the family relationship. Uh, the, the, the godfather is asking his son that, either, do you respect to your family? Do you respect your wife? Do you respect your children? Whatever, okay? Uh, but, and uh, this movie uh, gives us a very appropriate picture and image of the mafia people who are assassins, who are doing something violent in the, uh, in the, in the community. But the film and uh, this movie is representing their feature as one of the best uh, people in the world. That when we have Godfather, you know, get uh, terrored by someone, uh, you know, the audiences get, you know, uh, anxious uh, and they, 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 they get, uh, you know, um, uh, unhappy when they see that the Godfather uh, has been killed. Uh, we have to take uh, movies, documentaries, uh, our own made, uh, you know, uh, footage to our school, and you have to invite your students to do uh, such uh, media production for themselves. <coughs> Uh, I don't know whether uh, uh, I've yeah. been, uh, uh, my explanation has been sufficient or not. Yeah, I think, uh, it's fine. Yeah, Mohit, well, one more question, Mohit, uh, we can take. Okay, okay. So one more <laughs> question that is that I can see in the chat box is, what are some strategies of media teaching that can be undertaken to promote civic and political responsibilities in students with respect to media literacy? <clears throat> uh, it was uh, Professor David Buckingham. Uh, when I was talking uh, to him. He is one of the prominent professors uh, in the UK and uh, one of the professors in the critical uh, thinking. But uh, he says that we have to invite uh, our communities, the decision makers in societies to get back to school again, right? It means that we have to revive. We have to, again, bring uh, up uh, the meaning of uh, our traditional values, cultural values at schools and among the students and in the families too. If uh, we train our students and children at home at school with the cultural values, with the traditional values, it means that they feel the responsibility. Because I told you that, I explained that, uh, talking about the culture, it means that they're talking about the uh, morality, okay? Talking about the ethics. It means that they will be able to uh, respect uh, what is, uh, uh, whatever has been accepted by the majority of people in communities. I think it is uh, the uh, one of the solution that I can recommend. Uh, thank you so much, sir. And I think what you have just said about uh, the movies that we need to take to, uh, we need to show to our students. I think uh, here in this audience, we have students of uh, DME Media School and we have students of KR Mangalam University as well. And we have subjects like film appreciation, we have subjects like radio, we have subjects like media research, and we all try our level best to explain them the references regarding that and the values which you were just talking about. I think uh, there is this very uh, famous film uh, that was made in the Bollywood film industry that is Chiller Party, which talks about the kind of values which the society must has uh, must have and must possess. So thank you very much for taking out uh, time from your busy schedule and explaining the uh, basic nuances of media literacy to all our students and faculty members. It was lovely listening to you. So uh, without wasting much time, I would now request uh, Professor Dr. Susmita Bala, head DME Media School, to kindly propose the vote of thanks. Over to you, Dr. Bala.
Thank you, Mohit. <laughs> Thanks, Dr. Vastani. It's a pleasure for us that uh, you enriched us on such brilliant subject, media literacy, critical thinking, and democratization. It's very important and relevant subject for everyone in present scenario. I think students and teachers would have been immensely benefited with your presentation as well as your deliberation. So thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bastani, and thanks everyone present here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you everyone for joining in. Before we close for the day, I would just like to take a minute to remind you that DME in association with Deakin University, one of the biggest universities of Australia located in Melbourne is organizing Sinesta International Film Festival of India, SIPI 2021. The first edition of SIPI was held on April 17 to 2019 in DME and the second edition was held on December 15, 21. 20, uh, 15 to 20, 2020 in association with Deakin University. With this hope that the pandemic is in existing uh, exit mode, CIFI is coming up with Sinesta rejuvenation through this film festival. <laughs> exploration of new content, ideas and dimensions in storytelling will be the central idea behind CIFI 2021. CIFI will explore and deliberate on these changes through various screening sessions, workshops, masterclasses <laughs> by eminent experts. SIFI is open to college students and independent filmmakers from across the globe. Launch event of SIFI will happen on tomorrow, October 6, 2021 at 9.30 a.m. IST through Zoom. And the festival is scheduled in December 17 to 23, 2021. The film festival ambassador is Sigman Shudhulia. And entries are open via Film Freeway and Google Form. So I request everyone to join us for SIFI as well. And thank you so much for your time. Please fill the feedback form. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, everyone. In DME, we believe in engagement and empowerment of students. And since the time this COVID-19 is struck in 2020, we intensified this whole process. For the education sector, it was a big challenge. At DME, our small dynamic team decided to take this challenge head on. We organize different kind of programs, different webinars, wherein the distinguished people from the industry and other walks of life, they are invited to interact with the students. We try to keep them engaged in taking out newsletter, writing stories, editing stories, and not only that, they make posters, they make cartoons, they write pieces for the newsletter. Mentoring Cell at DME is a very unique feature in the ecosystem of education. While the subject teachers forge the knowledge domain strongly, it is the mentors who reach out to students in difficult times. During pandemic, when our students faced loss of their loved ones, home isolation and several other family issues, mentors ensure that students remain cheerful, lively and stay connected with us. We have ensured that our students are treated with compassion, warmth and gentle touch. And it has been our endeavor to treat all the academic activities of our students, which includes PSDA, internal assignment, and various other curricular activities accordingly. Research Cell also pays huge emphasis on interdisciplinary nature of research. In order to promote this, the research centers of the research cell were also motivated to join with each other and conduct research activities for students, faculty within DME and outside DME. While the strong academics and great industry connect is building great lawyers, media persons and managers at DME, we at Mentoring Cell are enabling these future leaders to be compassionate, emotionally strong and resilient for any times to come. We empower the students. All the schools of DME, they have their students' council. In DME Media School, this council is part. They organize the program themselves. They take their own decisions and they mobilize the students for all the good cause. Art has the power to unite and connect during the times of crisis. Bringing people together, sharing, soothing and inspiring our powers of art, which have been made empathically obvious by the DME Cultural Societies during the COVID-19 pandemic. By taking different innovative approaches in organizing various virtual competitions and events in which the students of DME 
have taken part with great enthusiasm and proved that DMEs are unstoppable. Care with compassion is motto of DME. During Corona period, we were always with our students. Their well-being is primary for us. We take care of our students. We met the expectations of the students, of the parents and above all of the industry. The placements this year were better than those of the previous years. DME is committed to supporting its students in all possible ways.